Bismillah. It's time, right? We have a minute? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to start today by reviewing the past tense just a little bit. Uh, just some finishing touches on the past tense. Just making sure you guys know what to do with it. Um, also making you aware that the, 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 what I taught you works at the basic level, but there are other levels of past tense, right? But at the basic level, what I gave you works. So what I gave you yesterday, and you have to help me put this review together, what I gave you yesterday is when you're trying to identify what, the, what does a past tense mean, you have to look at the ending, right? So huwa nasara, what's the ending that gives away that it's he helped? The a sound. Huma nasara, what gives away that it's both of them? A. In hum nasaru, what part is telling you they or hum? The u. Hiya nasarat, what tells you that it's she? At. Now, let's pause there for a second on she, and I want to show you something. Uh, let me make it a little bigger and change the font for you. Read the first one for me. Nasarat. Second one. Nasarta. Sec third one. Good. Last one. Okay. If I wrote that without the markings, they look identical. You notice that? Okay. The thing I want you to note is students at the beginner's level tend to become a little bit careless. What that means is you see any one of these, and your mind immediately goes to one of them that you like more than the others. Some of you really like nasarta, like it's your favorite. So whether it says nasarat, or it says nasarti, or it says nasartu, something in your brain says, I'm looking at nasarta because that's my favorite one. Some of you are inclined towards the feminine gender, nasarat. So whether you see nasarta, or nasarti, or nasartu, what does shaitan convince you? What are you looking at? Nasarat. So you, when you see the ta, you get messed up. Like, for example, yesterday I said, it was one of the tests, or one of the quiz questions, or, or the exercise questions was, aghwaitani. And th this has an attached pronoun. Yeah, and when you get rid of the attached pronoun, you're left with this. And a bunch of you said, she. Immediate thought was, she. Now let me put those words again. Nasarat, nasarta, Nasarti and Nasartu. Do they all mean different things? Yeah. Nasarat means what? She helped. Nasarta means you helped. Nasarti means feminine you helped. And Nasartu means I helped. Okay. Now, what a lot of you jumped when you heard Agwaita, you jumped to she helped. Why? Because you see the ta, and apparently your favorite word among the four is which one? So you're like, I see it, I don't want to think anymore. But if you stop and pause, what would you discover is the actual match for aghwaita? Nasarta anta. I'm pointing this out to you because this is a common mistake many of you make. You're not the first to make them. There have been thousands before you that have made them. So you have a tendency to make the same mistake, so watch out for it. I'm, I'm pointing out to you the places where you end up slipping up, right? So this is one of those places where you end up slipping up, okay? Now, another place you slip up. Uh, and I say, who disbelieved? And a very common answer that students give me when I say, who disbelieved, is she disbelieved, okay? She disbelieved. Now, why? This is the wrong answer, but I want you to understand why is this such a common wrong answer? Why do so many students, over 50% of beginner students, end up giving this wrong answer for this question? There's a statistical reason here. I want you to be aware of that so you can avoid that mistake for yourself. Kafarti is the feminine you, isn't it? It's the feminine you. And in the English language, feminine 
immediately, where does your subconscious mind, what word pops in your head the moment you think feminine? That's why you say she. Because the English language doesn't have a feminine version of you. It has a feminine version of he, which is what? She. But it doesn't have a feminine version of you. It's just you. But in Arabic, there are six different yous. You, both of you, all of you, feminine you, both of you women, all of you women. It's six yous. That's not something we're subconsciously used to in English. So the moment we think feminine, the mind says, oh, I know, she. And that's a mistake. If this was she, it would have actually been kafarat. She disbelieved. You understand? So two possible places of common error I've identified for you, yeah? These are, these are pitfalls. These, this, is the, this is the thing that can be... <coughs> students make these mistakes. The problem also with you folks, I blame you, is uh, you're dramatic. So what happens is you make one of mistakes, a mistake like this one, you're like, forget it. I don't understand anything. Ah, oh, it's too much. Oh, yeah, it's one con confusion. One con not all of Arabic didn't fall apart. It's not Jenga blocks that you pulled the long block and the whole thing fell apart. It's not, it's not a house of cards. It's one mistake. Don't dram dramatize it into, I just don't understand anything anymore. No, you don't understand one issue. Don't take one issue and make it everything. So you, what happens then is you end up overwhelming yourself. And when you overwhelm yourself, your brain stops working. And even the problems that were easy now become difficult because you've already told yourself it's difficult. Let me tell you something about, you probably already know this, those of you that have played sports before. Sports are, have a lot to do with athletic ability. But equally, sports actually have to do with psychology. Sports, and every great team in the world and any sport has a sports psychologist. They actually have a sports psychologist. If you get under the skin of your opponent, if you get them anxious or nervous, or their normal performance goes away, doesn't it? And some of you aren't athletes, but you're gamers. How many gamers here? I'm a gamer. If you're scared of a boss and you're scared to attack, you're going to get crushed every time. Until you let go of that fear and you learn to, and even though you lose, you won't lose as badly until you just overcome the, the nervous agitation. There's a nervous agitation inside you that paralyzes you from learning. I want you to get past that in your Arabic studies. Make mistakes. It's okay. But don't let those mistakes be like the end of the world for yourself. You understand? That's, a, that's an important thing I want you, because, you know, information is piling up and you understood 70%. Then you, 5%, you, don't, you got a little confused and you say, you know, Sal, I just don't understand anything. I just gave up. No, you were doing fine with 70%. You have a problem from 71 to 75%. That's the part you have a problem. Don't exaggerate that and say, I don't get anything. This kind of negative self-talk paralyzes you. It hurts you. It keeps you from learning, right? And so th this is uh, something that I've noticed in students quite a bit, and it's important that you address that. Okay, now, another small complication. Uh, this is something I teach much later, but because this is so common in the Quran, I need you to know from the beginning. Okay, even though this is not, this is not an official lesson right now, I just need you to know some things that happen in Arabic that are weird. How do they work? That's a whole study later on. But for now, just some things. I said nasara, right? You know what syllables are? Dif separate sounds. Na, sa, ra. How many separate sounds did you hear? Three syllables. When I say qala, how many syllables did you hear? Qala. Two syllables, isn't it? That's two syllables. Sometimes, some verbs, some past tenses are two syllables. They're not three syllables. They're two syllables. And that makes them a little bit trickier. So, for example, uh, I can't give you that one yet. That'll hurt your feelings. Okay, let's start with qala. The thing is, huwa qala. Huwa qala. Huwa kana. Two, two syllables or three syllables? Two syllables. So, huwa kana, huma. What do you think? Kana. Hum. Kanu. Same thing. Hia. 
kanat huma kanata then once you get to hunna what the arabs wanted was a sukun because they want the noon to shut up remember and then they want to add na and that would become kana that's what that would become theoretically and qala when you get to hunna would be qalna that's what it would be theoretically right but the Arabs thousands of years ago said, we don't want a long sound followed by a sukun. It doesn't happen in Arabic. In the middle of a word, you can't do it. You can't do qalna. We don't like it. And they say it's one syllable anyway. And the word, the letter that's causing a problem is the alif. That's the word that's, that's the alif is causing this problem. You know what? Qulna. Problem solved. We don't want the alif anymore. When we got to hunna, the alif popped away. But how do you know it's qulna and not qalna and not qilna? You don't know. I know. Just trust me. Okay? It's not always going to be qulna. Sometimes it's going to be kidta. Sometimes it's going to be, you know, khifta. Uh, khifta. Uh, khafa will become khifna. It'll change. But I just want you to know, if you see a two-syllable word, instead of a three-syllable word, probably the middle letter got dropped out because it just wasn't working. Okay, so now let's try kana again. Hua kana, huma, kana, hum, kanu. No, kana means he was. Kana means what? He was. Huma kana, both of them were. Hum kanu, what does that mean? They were. Hiya kanat. She was. Huma kanata. Them ladies, both of those ladies were. Hunna, they were gonna do kana, they don't do that. What letter will they get rid of? So it'll just become kunna. It's basically kun na, kun na, but then the noon's same letter, might as well just, you know, put them together. Kunna. Okay? Now, once you f solve hunna, You've solved everything else already. So it'll be anta kunta. It's not going to be kanta. It's going to be what? Kunta. Antuma. Kuntuma. Antum. Kuntum. Kuntum. This happened. This is the, the thing that's happening when you have two syllable words. This is again not an official study. I'm just telling you this happened so much in the Quran, you should at least know what's going on over here. In these kinds of cases, okay? These are called irregularities, okay? These are irregularities. And there's six different kinds of irregularities. This is one of them, okay? And I, I teach each irregularity as a chapter, and we try to understand how those irregularities work. Yes, sir? Good job. How do you differentiate this kunna from antunna becomes kunna? Very good. The antunna that becomes kunna is an attached pronoun, is it not? Doesn't that mean it's always attached to the end of a word? The, but the, this kunna, isn't it always at the end of a word? This one? And this one is a fi'il. Does that mean it's at the end of a word? No, it means it's an independent word. If it's standing by itself, it can't be from antunna. If it's at the end of a word, then it's from antunna. So the, the language is designed to protect from confusion, you see? So automatically you'll just know. If you see, for example, in the Qur'an, in kunna nisa'an. That's in the Qur'an. Is this from antunna or is this the fi'il? This is the fi'il. But if I say, um, khatbu kunna, it's not in the Qur'an, but I'm just throwing it out there. Khatbu kunna, who do you think? Is the fi'il or is this from antunna? This is from antunna. It's attached pronoun. Okay? So just the, the way the language is designed, even if it's the same spelling, you don't confuse it with each other. Okay? Now, last uh, tiny little complication. Then we, this is not an official lesson. If you're confused about it, that's okay. You're supposed to be confused. This is complicated stuff. But I'm giving you some extracurricular juicy bits. Then we'll go back, back to the official curriculum. So this, you won't even find this in the transcripts because I don't want this hurting your head. So the Arab word is hadaya. Don't write this down. It's, it's what? Hadaya. 
So there are three vowels in Arabic, alif, waw, and ya. Those are vowel letters, alif, waw, and ya. If your last letter is one of them, like hadaya or da'awa, the Arabs don't like to do that. They don't like to say hadaya and da'awa. So they say this, let's replace this vowel, hadaya, with a much, by the way, if it's ya, who's the doer? Who's the doer in hadaya? He. And who's the doer in da'awa? He. Because a ending is like nasara, isn't it? But the Arabs don't like vowels at the end to be ya and wow. So they replace this vowel with a vowel that will sound nicer. So what they do is they say hada. Instead of saying hadaya, they say what? Hada. And it still means he guided. It actually still means he. This is a little bit confusing because you remember reading nasara. When you hear an extra a, ah, it means how many? Both of them. How will you not confuse this with both of them? You see how many letters this is? Three letters, which means the third letter is not in. The, the alif gets added as the fourth letter, doesn't it? This is the third letter, so this is still within the range. Again, there's more to it, but I'm simplifying it at your level right now. So hada means what? He guided. They're not going to say da'awa, he invited. They're not going to say that. What sounds a lot better than da'awa? Da'a. Da'a. And da'a means he invited. He invited. Okay? Hadat. Don't worry about the conjugations. If you want to do the whole chart, it'll give you a headache. This is not the time. Okay, that's, that's, uh, this, is, this is what causes a lot of depression, clinical depression among Arabic students, the irregulars. But I wanted you to know what's ahead of you, so you're, you're ready for future trauma, but from now, okay? Let's get back to our original work. Yesterday, I taught you the endings of the past tense. You're responsible for, to know them from now. I taught you two additional concepts. One additional concept was, yeah? Question, yes? Mention if you have alif, wow, ya at the end, then Arabs don't like it at the end? Well, if well, wow and ya they don't like. They replace the wow and the ya with an alif. Oh, okay, cool. In a past tense. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Good. Okay. So, I taught you two additional concepts yesterday. One additional concept was when you attach a pronoun to a fi'l, you have to follow a process to make sure you get the meaning right. Do you recall that process? Identify the what? Not, identify the pronoun is the wrong thing to say. Identify the attached pronoun. Identify the attached pronoun. Because the fi'l itself also has a pronoun. So if you say identify the pronoun, oh my god. Disaster. Identify the attached pronoun. If you find one, then what do you do? You ignore it. Then you translate the opening fi'l whatever the doer was, and finally you can translate the attached pronoun, which was supposed to be in nasub status. Okay, that was the process. That was one concept, in addition to fi'il madi, the past tense that I taught you. The second concept that I taught you is, sometimes the Arabs like to use an outside doer. Towards the end of yesterday, I introduced you to the concept of the outside doer. What does outside doer mean? I don't want he, she, they, you, I, we to be the doer. I want, let's say, the Muslims to be the doer, or the teacher to be the doer, or the car to be the doer, or even Allah to be the doer. I want somebody mentioned by name, like a noun, not a pronoun, a noun to be the doer. How do I do that? You make them an outside doer. Well, how do you make an outside doer in Arabic? You follow two things. One, the fi'il itself has to be what version? One or the other? Hua version or hiya version. So from what we memorized, it's got to be either the Nasara version or the Nasarat version. That, it's got to be one of those two. And then the outside doer has to be where? Sometime after. Could be immediately after. Could be two words after. Could be three words after. That's okay. But what status does it have to be? <coughs> Fa means so. Qala lahum Fa means so. What does qala mean? 
He said, very good. What kind of word is lam? Ba, da, gaf, lam. What is that? Which means that the word hum is what status? It's jar. Now, qala is what version? Hua version, hiya version, anta version, nahnu, what version is that? If it's hua version, I should look for an outside doer. Maybe I will find one, maybe I won't. If I don't find one, the answer is hua. If I find one, then the answer is whatever I find. How do I find an outside doer? It has to be after, and what status? Rafa. Is there an outside doer? Where? Hmm. The word Allah. How do I translate this? So, fa means so. Allah said, lahum. What do you think that means? Said to them. So Allah said to them. So Allah said to them. You figured out all the pieces. Fa, qala. And then Allah who is the outside doer. And then lahum, you added it to it. So Allah said to them. Okay. You could. فَقَالُوا اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Is good Arabic? Yeah. خَلَقَنَا اللَّهُ خَلَقَنَا اللَّهُ خَلَقَ means created. Can you translate خَلَقَ for me? Who created? He. He created. What's the attached pronoun here that you had to ignore? Na. What does na mean? Na. Us. So when you translate khalaqana, what does it mean? He created us. Is the word Allah qualified here in the sentence as an outside doer? What qualifies it? Okay, after and rafa is one part. What's the other part? You can't even have an outside doer if the fi'l itself is not ready to accept it. What kind of fi'l accepts an outside doer? Huwa in here. Is khalaqa the huwa version? Yeah. Translate this for me. Allah created us. Khalaqana Allahu. Allah created us. Okay? Nicely done. Those were the two lessons additional to past tense that I taught you yesterday. One, the attached pronoun. Two, the outside doer. These two lessons don't just work for past tense. These two lessons work for present tense, same way. These two lessons, will, one of them, attached pronoun, will even work for commands and other kinds of fi'l. It works throughout. It's, it's great. You don't have to relearn any of this. It stays. Same rule, same formula, same, same problem, same solution. But today, I'm not going to talk about the past tense. That's in the past. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the present tense. And the present tense is great because it, con it covers the present and the future. It actually covers the present and the future. Okay? Now, let's start with a little exercise. Yeah. Even who are here, but the examples you gave are also covering huma and hum. Where? In the same page, right? Like. Which page are you looking at? Show me what 43. page you're looking Two Muslims said, Muslims said, page 43. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it should be 30 something, right? It's 43. 43. Yeah. 43, okay. Yeah, the examples. Let's go through these examples. Let's do that. Qala, in the first line. This is page 43, everyone. Qala, the first line. Qala, the second line. Qala, the third line. So far, so good. It's he said, he said, and he said, in all three, yes? And what's the condition for the replacing word? After? No. Well, the, the first word has to be who are he, fine. The second word has to be what two things? Is Muslimun after and rafa? A Muslim said. The first one is clear? Okay. Muslimani. Can you tell me the status, number, gender, and type of Muslimani? Four properties, right? Every ism has four properties. What are the four properties of Muslimani? Rafa two. Everybody remembers that Muslimani is two Rafa. So the number, the status is Rafa. The number is two. The gender is masculine, and the type is—is is there Allah on it? 
So it's common. It's common, yes? Okay, so my only concern was, in this grammar, my only concern was it should be after and it should be rafa. Did I care if it's one, two, or three? Did I ask that question? Irrelevant, doesn't matter. So what does Muslimani mean? Two Muslims. Are, is the word two Muslims qualified as an outside doer? Translate it. The two Muslims help. The word huwa has been fired. The word huwa has been fired. Whenever you have an outside doer, the, the huwa has been outsourced. His job has been outsourced. Literally. Qala muslimuna. Did the same thing happen? Did qala meet? Is, is it the kind of fi'il that should take an outside doer? Is it possible? Yeah, it's the huwa version. Is muslimuna rafa? Okay, well then translate muslimuna properly and make it the doer. Muslims said. Muslims said. Make sense? That's right. It's not going to be qalu muslimuna. It's going to be qala muslimuna. That's what it's going to be. Okay? Everybody clear about that? Okay? All right, not that. Okay. Let me give you a word. Say it for me. Mu'adhin. Mu'adhin. Okay. Uh, Muslim. Mu'allim. I'm giving you words. Hope. I'm giving you words. Hopefully, you know something about them. Okay. Uh, let's try. What else do you know? You don't know a lot. Okay, musafir. Yeah. Okay, good enough. Four. Mu'adhin. Who's that? Who's mu'adhin? The guy who gives the adhan. Muslim. The guy who Islams. Mu'allim. The guy who what? The guy who teaches. Musafir. The guy who what? Everybody knows that? Listen to me say these words one more time. But listen carefully. I'm going to change how they sound. It's just an oral exercise. It's a listening exercise, okay? I'm going to say the first word. U'adhinu. Uslimu. U'allimu. Usafiru. Say it with me. U'adhinu. Uslimu. U'allimu. Usafiru. What did I do? I replaced the meme with an alif. Check this out. You know, Mu'adhiz is the guy who gives the adhan. You already knew that. Okay? U'adhinu means I give the adhan. It's a whole sentence. U'adhinu means what? I give the adhan. Uslimu means I accept Islam. U'allimu means I teach. Usafiru means I travel. Pretty sweet. Okay, let me do this again. Nu'adhinu, nuslimu, nu'allimu, nusafiru. Nu'adhinu, we give the adhan. Nuslimu, we accept Islam. Nu'allimu, we teach. Nusafiru, we travel. Past tenses keep on changing the word at the end, don't they? Present tenses keep on changing the letter in the beginning. Different thing, different animal. That's the best way to not confuse the past tense with the present tense. The past tense is at the end, and the present tense is a new beginning, literally. Okay? It's always a beginning. Okay, now, a couple of introductory points. First, the first letter, well, I go, give you U and what else did I give you? Nu, yeah? Sometimes it's U and sometimes it's A. Sometimes it's U and sometimes it's A. And sometimes it's Nu and sometimes it's Na. But you don't decide. You don't decide if it's U or A or Nu or Na. The Arabs already decided that for you. So if they say Usafiru, you, uh, means I travel, you don't get to say one day I'm in the mood to say asafiru. That's Punjabi, that is not Arabic. If they say u'allimu means what? I teach. And you say no, 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 I like a'allimu. A'allimu. Mm, no, that's bahasa, but that's not Arabic. Whatever sound they gave you is the sound you have to keep. And if it was u'allimu, 
then the we the we version, the Nahnu version will be Nu'allimu. You cannot say u'allimu and then say na'allimu. If they gave you a sound, you stick with the same sound. So watch this. Adrusu means I study. Adrusu in Arabic means what? I study. How do I say we study? Nad you don't say nudrusu. You have to say what? Nadrusu. Once you have the sound, respect that sound, and every replacement will be the same kind of sound. You with me so far? Okay, so now we know two. A means what? A or, a or U in the beginning means what? I. And Na or Nu in the beginning means what? Astaghfirullah. I seek forgiveness of Allah. How do I say we seek forgiveness of Allah? Nastaghfirullah. Nastaghfirullah. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge. We seek refuge. Na'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Cool. Iyaka. Na'budu. Who, do, who worships? We worship. How do I say you? I, I, I worship. A'budu. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. La. A'budu. Tell them, I don't worship what you worship. La a'budu. How do I say we don't worship? La na'budu. La na'budu. Some of the stuff you already know, you're like, ah, yeah, I know that one. Abdu agay. I feel like Arabic is like this pigeon you've been trying to catch. You're like, gotcha. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Okay, so we got two letters, a and now you you hear the khatib every week, you hear the khatib every week, and right before you go in your coma, you hear in alhamdulillah, alladhi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'mal. <laughs> you guys have the Ashab al Kahf experience every Friday. This is why you recite Surah Al Kahf and then you go in the cave of the masjid. <laughs> My favorite is the students that are like in class and in khutbah too. Sometimes the, the khatib, like I, as a khatib, I like to make eye contact with the sleepiest person. Like, first I, I, I scan the room for the sleepiest person. Like, and then I make direct eye contact with that guy. And he's like, oh no, he's looking at me. So then he's like, you know, he's, he's fighting his eyes. <laughs> and then some of them come up with solutions. Like, they, they come up with really good solutions to like, save their dignity and get their sleep. So they're like. <sighs> they're so spiritually moved. They travel to another spiritual realm. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> my most traumatic experience, they, they asked me to do a dars for two hours on like 30 ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah in like one of the Qiyamul Lails in New York. It was like 11.30 at night. People are tired, man. No, 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 we just do it. It's one of the hard nights. So I was like, yeah, okay. So I start giving the, tra translating, translating, translating. I'm doing the dars. There's this brother sitting in the front row, right? He's, first he's sitting. Then, he, then, he, then he's doing this. Then he's, then he's doing this. Then he's doing this. <laughs> then, then he's doing this. <laughs> I kid you not. <sighs> and then he was gone, and he was snoring louder than my mic. And he was in the front row, laid out. <laughs> It's like, it looked like one of those evolution diagrams. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> so, a uh, or u uh, means what? I, in the beginning. Na or nu means? We. we. Okay. Yeah, what's your question? No. Okay. <laughs> not, that's not a present tense. That's not, good thing you asked. When they say aqimus salah, they say something else, not this lesson. 
That's later. Maybe tomorrow day after, maybe. Okay? Nope. Not a kabisala. Nope. Make istighfar. Say astaghfirullah. That one works. For you? A'udhu billah, astaghfirullah. Stay in your neighborhood. Okay? Stay in your little. You got a little too excited. Okay? And teach you how to ride a tricycle, you want to jump on the highway. Like, okay, you're going to run over by it. Easy, easy. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the word uh, ansuru. I help. Ansuru means I help. Anybody want to guess how do you say we help? Nansuru. We help. Nicely done. Ansuru, I help. Nansuru, we help. I'll give you a third one. Yansuru. He helps. Yansuru means what? For some reason, the Arabs decided that a ya in the beginning means he. Don't ask me. I, I didn't come up with it. Ya means what? He. So when they say, yu'allimu, who teaches? It's not you allimu. It's he allimu. Okay? So, yu'allimu means what? He teaches. Yu'allimu. Okay, let's convert yu'allimu. How do I say I teach? Is it a'allimu or is it u'allimu? Why is it u'allimu and not a'allimu? Once you have a sound, all the versions will have the same sound. That's not up to you. You don't get to mess with it. Okay, so how do I say we teach? Nu'allimu. So it would be wrong to say unsuru on the top line. Or nunsuru or yunsuru. I don't know what that language is. It's not Arabic. And if you say on the bottom line, a'allimu, na'allimu, ya'allimu, that's not Arabic. So it's going to be either a or u, but decided by who? The Arabs. And why did they decide it? That's a later course. Then you will, I expect my students to know when is it I and when is it U, when is it Na and when is it Nu. I expect them to know that when they learn a little bit of Sarf. But right now that's not the case. Okay? Now, we've got three. And the Ya means what? Okay. Now, let me ask you this. What does Ani mean? Have you come across Ani in this course? You know what it means? I think it means two. I think it means two. What do you think Una means? I think it means plural. You okay with that? Okay. Uh, what do you think na? Just a na. Actually, sukun, pause, plus na. What do you think that means? Like nasar na, hun na, anton na, the na. What do you think that means? Yeah, them ladies. I'm just showing you three endings. Ani, una, and na. Let me say that again. Ani, una, and na. na. Okay. What does yansuru mean? How many is he helps? One person. He is one person. Okay. What if I added ani to him? That would be, what part of this word, think about this like this. What part of this word is he? Yeah. What part of this word multiplied it by two? Ani. What did the answer become? Both of them help. So it's the ya means what? He. The ani makes it multiplied by two. What if I wanted to multiply it by plural? What do you think I should do? Yansuruna. Sorry, Yansu Runa. What would that mean? They help. They help. They help. How did you get that answer? The Ya part means what? He, what, and multiplied by plural. Where did the multiplied by plural came from? So what's the plural of he? They. They help. Okay? And then there is Yansur Na. Yansur Na. Okay? What do you think this means? Well, yansuru means he helps. And na means plural feminine. They, them ladies. What's positive times negative? Negative. What's masculine times feminine in this case? 
feminine. You know what this means? Them ladies help. Them ladies help. What I'm trying to tell you is there are four kinds of ya. Four kinds of what? Yeah, watch this. There's ya by itself, which means he. Don't write this, just watch. Ya by itself means what? He. Ya plus ani at the end. What does that mean? Two of them. Both of them. Ya plus, what do you think I'm going to say? Una. What does that mean? They. Ya plus na. They have it. Four kinds of ya. Let's say them together. Ya by itself. Say it. Ya with ani. Ya with una. Ya with na. Ya by itself. Ya with ani. Ya with una. Ya with na. Okay? Now, don't write this. No, no, don't take pictures. No, 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 no. How many beginnings do we know? The first beginning was a or u. The second one is what? Na or nu. Okay. The third one is what? Ya or you. Then there's three more ya's. What are the three more ya's? Ya with ani, ya with una, and ya with na. Okay, let's try something. I say ya durusu, means he studies. Okay, work with me here. Ya durusu, he studies. How do I say I study? Adrusu, I study. How do I say we study? Good job. Nadrusu means we study. Care careful before you answer. How do I say both of them study? What beginning, what ending? Yadru, yadrusani. Both of them study. They study. Yadrusuna. Those ladies study. Yadrus. Remember them ladies like to shut the word up before they come over? Same thing in the past, same thing in the present. It's a timeless phenomenon. Yadrus na. Okay? Okay, let's try. Yu'minu. Yu'minu means he believes. Yu'minu means what? He believes. Okay. I believe. Yu'minu. So, u'minu. Good job. U'minu. We believe. Nu'minu. Both of them Believe. Both of them believe. What beginning, what ending? First tell me that. Ya beginning and? What does that mean? How to say it? Yu'minani. Yu'minani means what? They both believe. How do I say they believe? Minuna, ya beginning and una ending. Bilgay. Wa yuqimuna as salata. Wa mimma razakna hum yunfikuna. Walladina yuminuna bima unzila ilayka. Wa bima unzila min public. Wa bil akhirati hum yuqinuna. Huh. Ya beginning and? Una ending. Okay, let's try another surah. Maybe, maybe you'll get something. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ يُكَذِّبُ Who lies against the deen? From what you just learned. How many kinds of ya are there? Four. One of them, ya by itself, is what does it mean? He lies against the deen. يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ يَدُعُ did you hear any extra endings or just ya? Yeah. Who pushes the orphan? He pushes the orphan. Wala yahuddu. Wala yahuddu. He doesn't encourage feeding the poor. Fawailu lil musalleen alladheena hum an salatihim sahoon alladheena hum yura'una. Yura'una. Ya beginning means he, una makes it plural. Never say una means they. Never say that. Five minutes from now, you will know why you never say that. What must you always say? Where do I always take you first? Ya beginning and then una ending. What does ya beginning mean? He, 
Una is the plural of he, so they. Yura'una, they show off. Wa, okay, alladhina hum yura'una wa yamna'una, yamna'una. Is that he, I, you, we? Which one is that? They. How did you get the they? Again, always give me the whole thing. Ya beginning, una ending. What is the wrong thing to say? Una means they. That is, because it, it does not, as you will see in a couple of minutes. How many kinds of ya are there? Good job. How many beginnings do we know, or nations do we know so far? Six. Alif, a or u, I. Na or nu, we. Ya or you. What does it mean? He. Ya with ani. Both of them. Ya with una. All of them. Ya with na. Them ladies. Okay. Here's your fourth one. Or your fourth letter. Say that for me. Good. Tadrusu. You study. Tadrusu means you study. There's four kinds of ta. Remember there were four kinds of ya? I'm going to copy paste that and say there are four kinds of ta. What do you think the next kind of ta is going to be? Ta with? So if tadrusu means you study, tadrusani. No, 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 not they both. What does ta mean? What does ta mean? You. You see why you have to go to the beginning every time? Because if you say ani means both, wrong. Ya with ani, both of them. Ta with ani, both of you. Now, tadrusuna. Tadrusuna. What does the ta mean? Ta means you. What does the una do to it? What does tadrusuna mean? Who studies? What's the difference between yadrusuna and tadrusuna? They study yadrusuna. Y'all study tadrusuna. Do you hear that? Do you realize now why just saying una means they is bad? Because sometimes you'll hear yadrusun, ya'lamun, yattaqun, yu'minun, and sometimes you'll see kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaquna. Tattaquna. Ta means what? You. Una makes it what? So all of you have taqwa. And other places in the Quran, Allah will say, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ أَوْ يُحْدِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ What does the ya mean? He. So what does yattaquna mean? They have taqwa. Alif and noon, that's two. Then there's four kinds of what? Ya. And if you know four kinds of ya, you also know four kinds of ta. How many all together now? Two, plus four, plus four, ten. Ten. There's only two more I want to teach you. If you know two more, you're good. 99% of the problem is solved. Yesterday I made you memorize. Huwa nasara, huma nasara, hum nasaru. Why am I doing this by myself? Huwa nasara, huma nasara. Why am I doing this by myself? Huwa nasara, huma nasara, hum nasaru. Hiya nasarat, huma nasarata. Hunna nasarna. Anta nasarta. Antuma nasartuma. Antum nasartum. Anti nasarti. Antuma nasartuma. Antunna nasartunna. Ana nasartu. Nahnu nasarna. I'll take your question in a minute. Just a minute. Today I'm not going to make you memorize. I'm not going to make you say huwa yansuru huma yansurani hum yansuruna hiya tansuru huma tansurani hunna yansurna anta tansuru antuma tansurani antum tansuruna anti tansurina antuma tansurani antum na tansurna ana ansuru nahnu nansuru. That's on page 39. I'm not going to make you memorize that yet. Not in this class. I'll give you the shortcut this time. But you sh if you're good Muslims, then that's up to you. That's between you and Allah. Page 39 is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... What I will give you is 12 shortcuts. How many? How many did I give you so far? I gave you 10. I only have to give you how many more? But I need you to know these 12 shortcuts off the top of your head. I'm not going to write them on the screen. When I am done giving you all 12, you will write them in your notes from memory. The way I told you, a and u, na and nu, ya by itself, ya ani, ya una, ya na, ta by itself, ta ani, ta una, ta na, and the last two. 
from memory. And I'll walk you through it a couple more times before you can do that. Don't write them yet. That's cheating. How many shortcuts left? Here's number 11. Listen carefully. Ta. Ta. Wait. I already gave you ta. What does ta mean? You. Ta means two things. Sometimes it means you. Sometimes it means she. Sorry. I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. Sometimes ta means what? You. And sometimes ta means when ta is number seven, it means you. And when ta is number 11, it means she. This is a 7-11 situation that we have. Ta means you and ta also means she. And let me speak for you and impersonate your soul. But Ustad, how are we supposed to know when it's you and how are we supposed to know when it's she? What's so confusing for me? Which is how you sound. Um, collectively, not individually. How will you know? Hmm, that's a hard one. Allah is talking about Maryam and you hear, you see a ta. I'm pretty sure it's not talking about you. That's talking about Maryam. She. Allah is talking to the Prophet Sallallahu and you hear a ta. I'm pretty sure that's not about some she, it's about a you. Do you understand? What am I trying to tell you? Context is super easy. This is not a crisis. Arabic grammar is about figuring out math problems. But language isn't just math problems. Language is common sense. All of this in the end, if you learn all of this grammar, but in the process, lose your common sense, that's a disaster. At the end of all of the grammar study, the thing that will start clicking, making everything click together, is actually common sense. These are common sense rules. So, how will you know the difference between 7 and 11? Context. Context. Common sense. Easy. And if you have a problem with that, see me after class. I'll talk some sense into you. Okay. Um, that's number 11. Only one left. Number 12. Ta. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's ta with ta beginning, ina ending. Number 12 is weird. Ta beginning and ina ending. It actually means anti. It's the only weird one. What does anti mean? No, it doesn't mean she. No, that's hia. Yeah, it's the feminine you, isn't it? It's the feminine you. So here's how it works. If I was talking to Ali Ahmed, I would say, Anta Tadrusu. Tadrusu. What's your name? Atiyah, if I was talking to you, I would say, Tadrusina. Anti Tadrusina. But if I was talking to Ali Ahmed, I would say, Anta Tadrusu. Ijlal, Anta Tadrusu. Atiyah, Anti Tadrusina. You understand? So when you talk to a female and you use anti, you have to start with a ta and end with ina. It's a weird thing they have. That's why it's number 12. It sticks out. Let's see if we can construct from memory without writing, without writing, all 12 shortcuts from memory. A and u. Where a and u means what? I. Good. Na and nu means what? We. Ya and you means what? Once you get to ya, it's not just number three. Number three, four, five, six are solved. How? Ya by itself, he. Then what? Ya plus ani. Ya beginning, ani ending. What does that mean? Both of them. Then what's the next one? Ya with? Good. Ya with una, which means? They, they, what's the sixth one? Ya with na, ya with na, which means them ladies, okay? There's four kinds of ya, followed by four kinds of ta, very good. Ta by itself, not she, no, not this time. Ta by itself, you. Ta with ani, both of you. Ta with una, all of you, ta with na, you ladies, you women. Number 11 and number 12, uh-oh. Number 11 is ta, meaning 
she. And number 12 is ta with ina, meaning anti, or you feminine. Anti, okay, you feminine. Write that down from memory. Somewhere on there. Page 39. Yeah, page 39. I want you to write these out. Even though they're written on page 40. I want you to write them from memory. Just on the side. Let's write them together, but you will guide me. What's number one? You don't have to write them in Arabic. Your Arabic is disgustingly ugly. Okay? A ah or U is what? I. Second one. Na or Nu is? We. Okay? What's the third one? It's actually Ya or You. Could be either one, right? Ya or You is what? He. This time I'll just use the letter Y. You already know it's going to be Ya or You. You already know that part. Uh, ya plus what? What does that mean? Okay. Ya plus Una. Okay. And Ya plus Na. Ta. ta. It's ta or two, right? Ta or two. What does it mean? Hmm? You. Then what? Ta, ta plus ani. What does it mean? Hmm? Okay. Ta plus una. Huh? It's ta or tu, like ya or you, or na or nu, or a or u. It's just telling you there's two sounds. What's, what's number 10? Ta with? Na. What does it mean? Sorry, misspelled. Okay, number 11? Ta. And ta plus ina equals tina. No, uh, it means yushi. Okay, there you go. Let me ruin your English while I'm teaching you Arabic. Yeah. Two? It, will it just be ta? It will be both of those ladies too, but you don't really need it too much. Don't worry about it. It's common sense. The ones you need are these. Okay? Everybody got it? No? Good. Both of them? <laughs> both of them. Both of them. You had never heard both of them before? It wasn't, you weren't in New York? There's a, there's a lot of, there's, there's some Texas here, there's some New York here, it's just all over the place. You, can you take a picture of this? You can take a picture of this, yeah. <laughs> huh? No, I'm not going to pose again, no. Okay. Now, go to page 40. Impress me. Actually, not 40. I want you to go to page 41. And don't look at these shortcuts. I want you to use your memory right now. You wrote them down. I'm looking at the word tadakkaruna. 
I'm trying to figure out what are the pieces of the puzzle that will help me get the answer, who, rem who makes an effort to remember? Who makes an effort to remember? Da means process, process, process. I, I never get tired of saying it. Da means what? You. Una makes it what? All of you make an effort to remember. Qalila ma tathakkarun, how little the effort y'all make to remember. Bi ayatina yadhlimuna. I want process. Answers are less impressive. Process, now that's... I forgot about your question. This is why I didn't answer it. I, I read your face. It was like 11 or 12. That's what he's asking about. You had a question. I'm going to ask one of my shayateen. Ta is she, isn't it? Does ta have to do with she? Was that your question? Something like that? Oh, okay. Fine. That was close. Okay. That's what I thought. Pay attention. Okay. Yavli Muna. What's the first part? What does Ya mean? What does Una do to it? See, I keep asking that question because then you won't forget. Otherwise, Yavli Muna, they do wrong. Tavli Muna, they do wrong. You're just going to mess it up. Follow this in the beginning until it becomes ingrained. Okay? Wafiha tamutuna in it, who shall die? That means what? You, una makes it, y'all shall die. Atawakka'u alayha, says Musa to Allah. Atawakka'u alayha, I lean on it. Where's the I coming from? How do I say we lean on it? Natawakka'u alayha. How do I say they? Lean on it. Yatawakka'una alayha. Yatawakka'una alayha. Okay? Yatawakka'u, I lean. Fa means so. I want to see if you can tell me the right answer for taqulu. I'm going to remind you this has to do with your favorite store. This has to do with your favorite store. Think about your shopping experience. Late at night. Near a gas station. 7 Eleven. You or she. So who says? You say or she says. Both of those are correct answers, but in a context, only one of them is the right answer, yes? Without context, either one, but in context, only one of them will make sense. La'allahu yatadakkaru. Yatadakkaru. Is there anything at the end other than the ya beginning? No extra stuff. Who makes an effort to remember? He makes an effort to remember. Good. Nakhafu. Who fears? Where did you get the we from? Okay. One time I was in uh, teaching this class and I said, where did you get the we from? And one kid said, Best Buy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yuridani. Yuridani. You means you. Annie means Annie. You, Annie. Both of you. Very good. Both of you. You see, when I say very good, you should just get worried. I say very good so sarcastically, then I start using it when it actually belongs and you start getting questioned yourself. That's the whole game plan. What does ya yeah mean? What did I say? Follow the process. What does ya yeah mean? Ya yeah does not mean you. I forgive you. Ya yeah means he. Annie makes it both of them. Yaqsifani. To put together. Who started sticking together? Both of... The question is, both of them or both of you? Both of them? If this was both of you, what would it be? Good job. Taqsifani. Yamshuna fi masakinihim. Yamshuna. They. They, isn't it? He, ya beginning, una ending. Ya beginning, 
Yeah, beginning means he. What does una do to it? They say. Yakuluna. You say or they say? They say. Fa sa ta'lamuna. Cool word. Fa, does anyone remember what fa means? Good. Fa means so. Sa means soon. Sa means soon. So what's, what does fa sa mean? So soon, so soon, ta'lamuna. Who will know? You all will know. Fa sa ta'lamun. Generally, means soon or? Sa means soon, yeah. Soon, okay. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Soon you will know. Not at this class. Who doesn't create anything? They don't create anything. Where did you get the they from? Again, process. Ya yeah, beginning means he. Una makes the plural of he, they. Is this getting easier? Okay. Nufassilu. Who explains? This is one of my favorite concepts in the Quran. Fasl in Arabic means separation. Fasl means separation. Fasl, I know Urdu speakers, fasl is crop. Okay. Isal ki fasl achiti. Right? But fasl in Arabic means what? Separation or distance. Fasila is used in Arabic too. Yeah, al-fasl bayna shay'ain, the distance between two things, which the Urdu speakers use fasla or fasila, right? Now, in Arabic, everything that has to do with confusion has to do with mixing. So the words that Arabs use for confusion are also the words Arabs use for what? Mixing. And every word that has to do with clarity has to do with separation. It's pretty cool. Confusion has to do with what? Mixing. And clarity has to do with separation. Like for example, bayin. Bayin means clear. Bana in Arabic, where it comes from, means to separate things. Bana. Wadah, wadah, wuduh means separation. Fasl also means what? Separation. Now fasla, another meaning of fasla is to explain. So when you explain something, it becomes what? Clear. But the concept is we break things apart so each concept can be understood at its own and then you can put them together and make sense of the whole thing. Like if you have a difficult mathematics problem. You cannot solve a mathematics problem except when you have to break it up step by step by step until you follow all the procedures and then finally at the bottom of all your work you get the answer. But you have to break things apart. Concepts, difficult concepts, even at the PhD level, when people are studying them, they have to break concepts apart and analyze one piece of information, one chapter, one notion, one idea, one theory, then add the next, then add the next, then add the next, and there are, there are building units, blocks. In fact, this is a philosophy of language itself. Words are made up of letters, and each letter has a sound. And when I'm saying the word word, you heard a number of sounds in a certain order. Each one of those sounds was separate from the other, allowing you to make sense of it. If the sounds of those words were not separated, then you wouldn't get what? Clarity. Clarity comes from separation of sounds. Then in a sentence, clarity comes from the separation of words. Not just the letters. Now words have to be separated. Then sentences have to be separated. Then paragraphs have to be separated. Then chapters have to be separated. Then books have to be separated. Then departments in the library have to be separated. Universities have to be separated. You understand? Every knowledge actually base is the root of all knowledge is actually what? Separation, distinction, separation, distinction. In fact, when you're studying for an exam, the quickest way to study for an exam is to go to the glossary of terms and make sure you know all the definitions, isn't it? And the definitions are what? Separating each concept from every other concept. That's exactly what it boils down to, doesn't it? So when Allah says, نُفَصِّلُ ayat, coming back to this, Allah says, that is how we explain the ayat. 
meaning who takes responsibility for explaining the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal Himself says, we ourselves explain the Quran. And in the word explain, He gave us the formula, how does He do it? Separating one concept from another, one surah from another, one story from another, right? One situation from another. And by separating all of them, you start getting clarity about this fits here, this fits here, this fits here, this fits here, which gives us the meaning of the word hikmah. Hikmah in Arabic, the def- which is translated wisdom, actually means shay'in fi mahallihi, when you put something where it belongs. And when you clean up a room, when you clean up a kid's room, you put the socks where they belong, you put, you put the laundry where it belongs, you put the toys where they belong, you put the notebooks where they belong, the stationery where they belong. What are you doing? You're separating things and putting them where they belong. Allah separated his ayat and put every ayah where it belongs. He separated this, like, the, you know, uh, Baqarah has Musa alayhi salam and, you know, Araf has Musa alayhi salam. But he separated them, didn't he? He could have put them all together. He separated them. There's a reason he separated them. You wouldn't get the clarity if they were put together. There's a purpose behind it. So Allah even creating separation in the Quran of similar, even similar concepts is for a reason. There's a reason that he did that. So there's lots of, it's so much loaded wisdom inside just this phrase, كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ ayat. This is how we explain the ayat. This is a hard one. I'm warning you. يَتَرَبَّصْنَا يَتَرَبَّصْنَا Who has, who waits? Them ladies. How did you get them ladies? Pro, step by step. Ya beginning and na ending. Just don't worry about how big the word is in between. That's not your concern. Your concern is beginning clue, ending clue. Problem solved. Yatarabbasna, those women wait. Okay? يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ This is talking about the ayah of divorce. When a man divorces a woman, then she, they must wait by themselves, meaning they cannot remarry until three periods are done. ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ Right? So that's what this is referring to. يُعَلِّمَانِ يُعَلِّمَانِ Pieces, pieces. What are the pieces? You meaning? He. Good. Ani makes it? Therefore the meaning is? They both teach. Excellent. Yata'allamuna. Yata'allamuna. Ya means he. Una makes it. What do you get? They learn. They learn. Not so hard, is it? Alhamdulillah. We're just going to do number three. What's your question? Number 17. It says, Fayata Allamuna. Fa mean so. Mm-hmm. Ya is for he. Right. Una is plural. So the verb here is ta'allam. ta'allam. Mu? I didn't teach you what the word is. I just told you to look at the beginning and the end. Why are you focused on the middle? There will be a time where I'll teach you to focus on the middle. Then you will thank Allah that I didn't make you focus on the middle. And you will remember the days when I didn't make you focus on the middle. Okay. But right now, thank Allah that I'm not making you focus on the middle. Okay? Ask the students who have done this before and ask them how it felt when they were studying sarf, which is about the middle. Okay. There's an old process from yesterday. I wonder if you still remember it. There's an old process. Well, it's been a long time. Man, when you were much younger, do you people see an attached pronoun? Where? What is the process that you learned yesterday for attached pronouns? Find it and ignore it, but make sure you understand the meaning. What's the meaning of kum? You all. We'll come back to that. Ya'idhu means to advise. Who advises? He advises. He advises who? He advises all of you. He advises all of you. What am I trying to show you with example number three? The same thing you did for past tense is the same exact thing you're going to do for present tense. 
ignore the attached pronoun, solve the problem, add. Arabic is so easy. It's so easy, it hurts. Huh? Why didn't I say they? Okay, let's figure that out. Kum comes from? Page 18. Kum comes from? What does antum mean? Well, anta means you. Antuma means both of you. Antum means you all. Doesn't mean they, it means you all. So do you know why I didn't say they? Okay, good. Good mistakes to make because then the burn never leaves. Okay, uh, the first one's hard, but before Salah, just give me number seven. Let's see if you can do that. What is the attached pronoun, ladies and gentlemen? Good job. Ka is the attached pronoun. What do you, if you ignore, what do you have left? Yes, Aluna. Yes, Aluna. What beginning, what ending? Ya means he. Una makes it. So what does it mean? They ask you. Yes, Alunak. They ask you. Yes, Alunaka an al Shahri al Harami, Kital al Fihi. Yes, Alunaka an al Khamri wal Maisiri. They ask you about the sacred month. They ask you about gambling and alcohol, alcohol and gambling. Right? They ask you, they ask you. Wa yas alunaka anil mahid qul huwa adha. Okay? So, salah time almost. Uh, alhamdulillah, most, uh, a good number of students were sponsored. If you'd still like to sponsor, there's about 73 students who haven't been. I'm leaving the, the link on the screen. Let's go make salah.
Tuesday. Tuesday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa alaikum salam. You've been waiting. Oh, really? Let me turn the mic off. Yeah? Okay. Okay, everyone. Arabic class. Arabic class. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Um, let's wrap up today's work. Um, the first bit of it was, I want to recap because review always helps. The 12 shortcuts that we discussed today. Can you go through them from memory? A or U or? No, A. You got to give me meanings, otherwise it's meaningless. A uh, or U in beginning is I. Uh -huh. Na or Nu is we. Ya or you is he. Ya with Ya plus Ani. They, both of them. Both of them. Ya plus Una. They. Then Ya plus Na, meaning them ladies, okay. How many kinds of ta are we going to get? Four now, four and four, right? So four, the first one is ta by itself, you, ta with ani, both of you, ta with una, all of you, ta with na, you women, you ladies, then there's the extra twos, 11 and 12. Ta again means she. And ta with ina means auntie. Just get used to auntie because we don't have an English equivalent, really, right? The feminine you. Now, we are on page 40, I think it is. 42. 42. And we're going to try to solve all of page 42 because I really want you to know this well. So the practice will really help us. Ya'tiyaniha, the first one. Ya'tiyaniha, what am I ignoring? Good job. What is left? Ya with ani, which means it's who commits? Both of them commit. What do you think? Commit what? Yeah, but it's her. Or it, which makes more sense? It. Both of them commit it. Hua and hia can also mean it in English, right? Because the Arabs don't have a separate word for that. So both of them commit it. Bring is the wrong translation. That is, cr cross that out. Bring is wrong. That would be yu'tiyani, not yatiyani. It means commit, to commit something. Ya'idhukum we did, Yes? Let's try ta'khuduhu. We didn't do ta'khuduhu. Number five. What's to be ignored first? Good job. Who is ignored? What's left? Right. It begins with ta. Meaning means two. It has two answers. This is a 7-Eleven situation. This is a 7-Eleven situation. Which means it could be you take it. You take it. Or... She takes it. How will we know which one it is? Context. Context only. Okay? So the two answers are you take it or she takes it. We did number seven. Yes, Alunaka. We did do that. Yuhawiruhu in Surah Al Kahf. Fakala li sahibihi wa huwa yuhawiruhu ana akhtaru min kamalan wa azuna fara. Yuhawiruhu. Who converses with who? Is the question. What's the thing to be ignored here? So we'll leave that aside. Yuhawiru means the ya beginning tells you who's the doer. He converses with who? 
He converses with him. He converses with him. Yansurunahu. Somebody solve this for me. Let's see. Uh, Nuaim, are you here? Okay. Let's see. Go ahead. Why don't you, Saad, why don't you try? Saad? Yansurunahu. We yeah. ignore who first. Good. Then it's ya and una. Yeah. It makes it them. Right. They helped him. Not the past tense. They help him. Why not the past tense? Because this is present tense. Because it's the present tense. They help him. Good job. Very good job. Okay. Fatatakhidunahu. Lady side. Who's got it? Fatatakhidunahu. Any volunteers? Go ahead. Uh, raise your hand so Naim can find you. Uh, you ignore the who. The Could you speak a little lower? We can still hear you. You ignore the who, the attached pronoun, and you ignore fa, that means so. so you right. The taki duna, da and una is you all. So it's so you all take him. Right. You all take him, or you all take it. Okay, you all take him or you all take it. Context, we don't know what the who is referring to. You uh, hum to hold accountable. Someone holds someone accountable. Ijlal, why don't you try this one? Someone holds someone accountable. So we'll start with uh, ignoring the home first. Right, ignore the home. Uh, then we got you ahizu. And then we start with you, uh, which means he. Good. So he held, and there is no combination then, so just he held them uh, accountable. Okay, he held them accountable is in the past or the present? So he holds them accountable. Good, he holds them accountable. He holds them accountable. Everybody understand that? Okay, the home got ignored, then we solved the problem. Now the problem is yesterday we translated so many things in the past tense that even now you guys are living in the past and you're not able to move on. This is the present tense, translate in the present tense. Yes? You ahiduhum. Nahshuruhum. Who would like to try gentleman's side? Yes. Ayan, go ahead. We gathered them. We gathered. Uh, we gathered. Oh, we, we are gathering them. Okay, we're gathering them, or we will gather them, or we gather them. Present tense. We gather them. Good job. Hum is to be ignored. Nahshuru means we gather. The noon tells you we, and then you solve the problem. We gather them. Good job. Yahzununi, lady side. Let's see. Somebody who hasn't raised their hand before. This is their first day to be heard. It makes me sad that some of you have not... Raise your hand yet. Let's see. I'm going to wait. Let's, let's, let's make this awkward. It's fine. Did you, the, the little girl? Okay. Yes, you. Okay. Which one? You? Oh. Neither of them? I'll wait. That's okay. Yeah, we can both wait. It's fine. Go ahead. Ni is the um, like attached pronoun. Good. Ni is the attached pronoun. So ya means uh, he. Good. And okay. No other like ending, so it means he saddens me. He saddens me. It could also mean it saddens me. So it could mean he saddens me or it saddens me. Very nice. You alimuka. You alimuka. I pick someone who is, yes. Raifi, in the red, the young man in the red. Tell me your name again, young man. Muhammad. Muhammad, tafadl ya Muhammad. You, uh, ka is the attached pronoun, so Good it job. is to be ignored. You alimu is the word. You, uh, is he. Good. You, uh, so, is he te teaches he teaches, uh, he teaches us. No, he teaches them. What does ka mean? 
Ga comes from Angta. Angta is uh, you all. You, not you all. Yeah, you. 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 So why are you saying us? He, he teaches, teaches you. you. Yes, good job. He teaches you. Very nice. Ya'kuluhunna. Ooh. Ooh, what is this? Yes, young lady, over here. Nine. Tell me about Ya'kuluhunna. Okay, so uh, Hunna is the attached pronoun, so Good we job. need to ignore that. Ya means he. Hunna means them. So Ya'kuluhunna means he eats them. <laughs> it's true. That's what it means. Yeah. That means. Yeah, Okay. What is this talking about? Read Surah Yusuf. Who eats some, something? Someone eats something. Unabbiukum. Unabbiukum. Kum is the attached pronoun. Good job. U means I. I inform them. No. I inform you all. Yes. I inform you all. Yubashiru ki. Lady side. You're going to try. I volunteer you. Yes. Um, ka is the attached pronoun. So Good job. Ka is the attached pronoun. Um, you is um, he. Yes. So... He gives good to you. He gives? Good to you. News. Good gives, news to you. He gives good news to you. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And the key, the you is feminine. It's key. It's not ka, right? So it's key. So it's the feminine you. Okay. Allah gives you good news of a child. Who is this talking about? Madiyam. Good. Yuhadhirukum. You have zero com. Yes. Yeah. Com is the attached product. Good job. And then you is he. So he warns y'all. He warns all of you. You have zero com. He warns all of you. Good job. To hadithu nahum. To hadithu nahum. Yes, go ahead. She raised her hand. Wait, wait, let everybody hear. The attached pronoun is hum. Good job. Uh, tu is for y tu with una, that's you all. So you all inform them. You all inform them, yes. It can also mean you all tell them, which is similar. You all tell them. Yadurruhum, number 33, any volunteers on the guy's side? Yes, Oy, over there. Red, red t-shirt, red and blue. Yadurruhum. So, whom is the attached pronoun? Good that job. Be ignored. Uh, ya is he. Uh, Yadur whom he harms her. So you said whom is the attached pronoun? What does whom mean? Her. Whom doesn't mean her now. Them. Yeah. Did somebody else say that to you? No. no. Okay. That was just you. You. Yeah. You arrived at that process. conclusion. Okay. Process. Okay. Yadur he harms means what? them. He harms them. I don't know why he harms her was on, her, on your mind, but it's he harms them. <laughs> okay, I'm messing with you. Yuhibbu <laughs> nahum. Uh, I don't know why you reminded me of something. I have to tell the story now. You reminded me. You guys do that sometimes. You mess me up. Okay, so this is in like the year 2000. I was at an i'tikaf in New York because um, I was religious and stuff. So I was in this i'tikaf and we were studying Arabic, actually. We were studying Arabic and Quran and other things. And there was a bunch of guys. There was a, there was a wall. There was sisters on that side, brothers on this side. And we were studying for one month. And the ladies, they had their own quarters. And the guys, they had their own living spaces and whatever. And... I never met these people that were taking the program with me. There was 15 of us. 
and all of them were, with the exception of one or two, they were all older than my, myself. And one of them was like a, he was a doctor. He had finished his residency and he was a medical doctor, licensed. And he took this month off to just study the Quran and study Arabic and study the seerah. It was like a whole day thing. And um, it, we know when you have breaks in these programs, you know what the guys do? They like wrestle or they punch each other in the face, or they like go play outside, or just joke around, eat something, whatever. It, it's a break. After like a two hour long grammar session, and then there's a 30 minute break, and then you, you get back to two more hours, and 30 minute break, and two more hours. So you gotta let some steam out. But there was this one brother, the doctor guy, every break, he just goes in a corner, and he just does dhikr. That's all he does. He just, you just see him in the corner. We used to call him Sufi Saab. Because everybody else used to hang out and he was just in the remembrance of Allah all the time. We memorized huwa huma hum. The pronouns? How did they go? Huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana nahnu. Okay, so our teacher made us memorize it and then he asked who's going to volunteer and nobody wants to volunteer so he picked the spiritual leader of the group. So he said, go ahead, give us the pronouns. And he was so shy, and he said, Hua huma hum, anta antuma antum, ana nahnu. What did he skip? So my teacher said to him, you don't have to be that Sufi. <laughs> so, so there was this other kid, as I, I was 18 at the time, there was this other kid in the class. He actually lives here in, uh, in Epic area. I'm going to call him out soon. But anyway, he's not here, which is good. Um, he was 16 at the time. He was half asleep in the class. He was like almost in a coma. And our teacher, he picks him next. And you know the, the partition on the, the side? He was on the guy's side, obviously. He's sleeping on the partition like this. And our teacher picks on him. You, pronouns. And he starts with, Hiya huma hunna. So he said, you spend more time with him. Yuhibbunahum. Yuhibbunahum. Yes. Raise your hand. With the red rear. Whom is the attached pronoun? Good. So we ignore it. Um, and yeah, with una is they. So it's they love them. They love them. Very good job. They love them. Yunfiqunaha. You have to give me a logical translation. Ali Ahmed, why don't you try? It has to make sense. Uh, ha is the attached pronoun. Ooh. Yes, it was. Spend more time with it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Ha is the attached pronoun, uh -huh. so we ignore it. Yes. And uh, ya means he. Mm -hmm. It's attached to una, so it means they spend it. Good job. They spend it. Instead of saying they spend her, which makes no sense. Again, you learn grammar, but you also have to use common sense. Good job. Good use of common sense, Ali Ahmed. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the second column, because I want to get through all of these. Yuqatilunakum. Somebody who hasn't gone, come on, get brave. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yuqatilunakum. Okay. So, kum is the attached pronoun, so we ignore that. And then, ya is he, and ya plus una is they. Good. So, it's yuqatilunakum, um, they fight you all. They fight all of you, yes. They fight you all. Good job. Yu'jibuka. Guy side, come on. Somebody who hasn't raised their hand yet, let's go. Before I start picking. Go ahead, all the way back. Yu'jibuka. Ka is the attached pronoun. Good. And, and Yu'jibuka is he. So Good. Yu'jibuka is he impresses you. He impresses you. Impresses. Excellent. You guys have... I think, kind of figured this out now, haven't you? Okay. Yabhunakum. Ladies? Yes? Back there. Keep your hand up so he can find you. Yabhunakum. 
Um, <laughs> gum is an attached pronoun, so you don't count that. And so right. it would be, they want you. They? Yeah, they want, actually, I think you should change the word want here with pursue. That's a better translation of Baha Yabri. They pursue. So per, they pursue all of you. Yeah. Oh, okay. They pursue all of you. Very nice. Yel Mizuka. Yes. Rafi. There's. So the ka, we ignore the ka. Good. And Yel Mizu, he, he criticizes you. He criticizes you. Excellent. He criticizes you. I mean, it's not excellent that he criticizes you, but. <laughs> Wait, lady side. Ahmilukum. Huh? There's two questions. Okay. Um, like for ha and who, sometimes we say it. Yeah. If we have to say they pursue all of it, is there a possibility of saying kum as it? No. So, okay. The word you, you can never be it. Sorry, whom? Whom is for people. So how do you say all of it? Well, you, I think you mean them. I think you mean them as a non-human thing. For example... Yeah, them as a non-human thing, correct. Right. Uh, what, do you, what do Arabs do for non-human plurals? They what do you remember? Either broken or non-broken. Non non-human broken plurals. What do they do? What do they use? She. What's the pronoun for she? Ha. That's it. You got your answer. Ahmilukum, lady side. Ahmilukum, way back there. No, I'm far right. Far right. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Yes. Kum uh, is like a you all. I carry you all. Yeah, I carry you all. Very good. I carry you all. Ta'lamuhum. Yes, right here. Um, so you forget whom, since that's the attached pronoun. Good. Ta is you, so it's you know them. You know them. There's another answer possible. Remember your favorite store? Late night uh, Snickers run. I have no idea. <laughs> so, ta means you. And then there was four kinds of ta. What was hint number 11? Do you remember? Um, she. So Which she, is also ta. She knows them. She knows them. So it's you know them or she knows them. How will we know the difference? Context. Okay? Good. You see Buhum? In the back. Rafi, where are you going the wrong lane? You got to look at me first, and then first let me point, then you shoot. Wait, she's got her hand up. She's got her hand up. Yeah. This, yeah. Yes. Home is the attached pronoun, so you forget it. And you means they or he. So he. He afflicts them. He afflicts them. Or another common sense meaning could be what? It afflicts them. It afflicts them. It afflicts them. The he could be it, right? So it afflicts them. Yes, the dinuka. Yes, sir. Right there. He's got his hand up. And I'll come to you next. Okay, so now. Um, ka is the attached pronoun. Good there. job. And ya is the he. So, yes, Tazinuka is he seeks permission. He seeks permission from you. Right. He seeks your permission. He seeks your permission. He seeks your permission. Very good job. Very good job. And you had your hand up, so we'll come to you. Yudhiluhum. Let's try that. So, you ignore the attached pronoun of hum. Good. And then you look at the word Yudhilu, which is um, he, placed, he places in, right? And then Yudhiluhum. Um, he places in them. He places them in dot dot dot. Meaning, yudkhiluhum jannatin. He places them in gardens. Yudkhiluhum annara. He places them in the fire. So the second, where did he place them? I didn't mention here. 
but he places them in something. Okay? So that's yudkhiluhum uh, meaning. Sanuti'ukum. Ladies' side, sanuti'ukum. Yes, young man over here. Wait. You ignore us. No. Uh, you ignore me? Kum. Oh, kum, okay. And it means we obey you all. Good job. We obey you all. Well done. Okay, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip. Tw just keep it away from the speaker. Uh, I'm going to skip 22 for reasons that shall not be declared yet, but I will go to 24. 24. Guys? God knows. Hassan, let's try Hassan this time. Ya means he. And the attached pronoun means you, so it's he asks you. Good job, he asks you. Few left. Dhunani. Call it out now, everybody. Dhunani, what do you think? Who harms who? She harms us. They harm you. Step by step. Step one, ignore what? Meaning what? Ni means what? Means me. Tu'dhuna, ta beginning and what ending? Ta means you, una makes it. So who hurts who? You all hurt me or you all harm me. Tundiruhum, who warns who? Who warns who? Yes. In blue. Uh, so, so home is the AP, the uh, attached pronoun. AP, T, huh? T AP. Toe is you. We're on, we're on nickname basis now, AP. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you got fresh like that with the attached pronouns. Okay. <laughs> you warned them. You warned them? them. You warned. warned. You warn them, but them. there's another answer. She warns. She warns them. Rast Migi. Okay. You meet to come. You meet to come. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, kum is the attached pronoun. Yes, it is. So, you meet to. Uh, uh, he causes to die. So. Um, you meet to come is he causes you all to die. Excellent. Yesu mu nakum. Yesu mu nakum. So kum is you all. Yeah. Ya and una is they. So they hurt you all. They hurt you all. Uh, Yesu muna should also be translated they humiliate you all. They humiliate you all. Uh, number 34, call it out, everybody. He commands you all. Yuharrifunahu. They distort her, him or it, which makes more sense. It, they distort it. Yuhadjunakum. Who argues with who? They argue with you all. They argue with you all. Question? So, so it's going, going very well. Um, just the Dhamma on the, yeah, you. And sometimes it's he and sometimes it's they. I may have missed something. Which like one? In number two, it's they number two? fight you all, right? But wait, wait, let me go up there. Hold on. Okay. Sometimes the yeah... Well, the Dhamma is you, for you is the he, and sometimes it's they. I may have missed something. Okay, so let's figure that out. Okay. The first one was they because it started with you but ended with una. That's why it was they. Not by you because, not because of the you, but you plus the una. That's what made it they. What I want you all to remember is the beginning letter, you might find it to be ya. Yeah. And you might also find it to be you. You might find it to be ta. You might also find it to be tu. That's not going to make it plural. What makes it plural is either one of these, and then there's an una at the end. 
or there's an ani at the end. But either one of these can be found. Either one of these are okay. Now, let's pick a surah everybody's already memorized. Call one out. Let's start with the shortest ones first. So the Imam today recited Ida Ja'a Rasulullah wal Fath, if I'm not mistaken, right? So let's let's do that first. Too far down? Oh yeah, I missed it. Where do I, why do I keep missing it? Where's Fat? What the surah number is it? One ten? Yes. That's why I wasn't going far down enough. Only three I had. Let's start with something more basic though. A'udhu, who seeks refuge? How do you know? I seek refuge with who? Billahi, what kind of grammar is Billahi? Jar majroor. Okay, I seek refuge with Allah. Min, min means from. Min as shaitani is what kind of grammar? Jar majroor, from the devil. From the devil. As shaitani, ar rajimi, both al, both jar, both singular, both masculine. What's going on here? Ah, ar rajim means cursed. So what does this mean? I seek refuge with Allah from the cursed devil. From the cursed devil. Okay, min shaitan ar rajim. Okay, we did Bismillah rahman rahim before. Ida is a word you don't know. Ida means when. Ida means what? When. Okay. Ja'a is a past tense. Ja'a is a past tense. Who's the doer in Ja'a? He. He came. He came. Yes? Now, tell me this. When you see he came, is it possible that you might have an outside doer? It's possible, yeah? This is a past tense, right? So it's the ending we pay attention to. Today we learned the present tense, we pay attention to the beginning. This is a past tense. So we pay attention to the ending. Fine, he came. How do you find an outside doer? Rafa and after. Nasru. Is that Rafa? Nasru is Rafa? Why? And, and the word Allahi is Jar. Why do you think that is? Mudaf and? If Nasr means help, what does Nasrullahi mean? The help of Allah. Do you think the help of Allah is the doer here? What proves it that it's the doer? It's after and Rafa for a fi'il that is what version? Who a version? So who came? The help of Allah came. You understand? What does wa mean? Does anybody know what wa means? And what else came? Victory also came. How do I know victory also is a doer? It's also Rafa. There's the next ayah starting with wa. And ra'ayta. What do you think? Past tense or present tense? Ra'ayta. Okay. Today, early on in class, I said there's four words with ta. Nasarat. Nasarta, Nasarti, Nasartu, and you guys pick one of them and always use that one. Find the right one. Ra'ayta. Nasarta, who saw? You saw. Nasarta, Ra'ayta. So you saw. Everybody clear? Okay, now, when I say you saw, who's the doer? You are. Who did you see? That would be what status? If I told you you saw someone, they would have to be nasab because details are nasab. Notice the word anasa. What status is it? Nasab, isn't it? Because it's answering the question, who did you see? 
رأيت الناسا. Does anyone know what anasa means? رأيت الناسا means what? You saw people. You saw people. Then we see the word yadkhuluna. Past tense or present tense? Present tense. Ya beginning? Una ending. What does ya beginning and una ending tell you? Yadkhuluna. They enter. They enter. You see where I got the they from? You saw people entering. You saw people as they enter. Fi means in. What kind of word is fi? It's a jar. It's a jar. If you've got a jar, you better find a what? A majrur. What's the majrur here? Dini. Fi makes a jar. So dini. Dini is light. Doesn't have a liflam. The word Allah is jar. What's that? Fi dinillahi means what? In the, the religion of Allah. You saw the people entering into the religion of Allah. You saw them entering how? Afwaja has another detail. In droves, large numbers, huge numbers. Sabih, we have not yet done. We will do this tomorrow. This is a word you don't know yet. This is out of our scope for today. It will be within our scope tomorrow. And wastaghfirhu is also not in our scope today. It will be in our scope tomorrow. Inshallah. But bihamdi, I think you can do. It's a jar majroor. And hamdi rabbi, hamdi rabbi, mudaf, mudaf ilayh. And rabbi ka, Mudaf, mudaf ilay. And inna hu, not in that mudaf, mudaf ilay, no. Inna anna ka anna bi anna layta lakinna la Allah. What is that stuff? Inna hu, certainly he. Kana, past tense. Past tense. What's past, what does kana mean? Who was? He was. But there's no outside doer because there's nothing rough afterwards. So it's just he was. What was he? Give me some details. That's why tawabun is nasl. He has always been someone who accepts tawbah. What I'm trying to say is, other than two words, at a basic level, what we studied over the last eight days, you caught most of it. You could see most of the mechanics that are happening. Let's pick one more short surah, just so you see. Kids, hey you three, too happy. Guys, out? Okay. Okay. What surah? Give me surah. Al Qari'ah. Ma'ida. Let's do Ma'ida. No, let, let's, do, let's do a little bit of... Uh, I think a lot of people know at least some parts of uh, Surah An-Naba. What about Yatasa'aluna? Who asks each other? How do you know it's they? What kind of word is An? I don't know, ba, finish it. Ba, ta, kaf, lam, wow, min, fi, oh. It's a harf of oh. What does it do to the next word? That's why an is jar. What's happening between an and al-azimi? Mausuf and sifa. an means news. Al-Azim means great. An means about. What does it mean? About the great news. What are they asking each other about? About the great news. al you don't know much about yet. Do you know about whom? What does it mean? They. Fihi. How many words are fihi? What two words? Not mudaf mudaf ilay, no. Ba, do it with me. Ba, ta, kaf, lam, wow, min, 
hello, fi, harfav. So what is the he part? It's the attached version of huwa, which is now majrur because of fi, in it or about it, mukhtalifuna. That's the ism chart. Four properties of mukhtalifuna, anybody? Four properties of mukhtalifuna. Is it rafa, nasab, or jar? How do you know it's rafa? Is it singular, pair, or plural? How do you know it's plural? Una, Muslim chart. Is it masculine or feminine? Good, because it's from the masculine chart. Is it common or proper? Cropper? Okay, it's common. It's common. What about what about sayalamuna? Sa means soon. Who, who, who's going to know? Soon, someone will know. Soon they will know. How did you get the they? This is pretty cool, huh? You know, one of the most frustrating things about studying Arabic is you study it and then you're like, but I don't understand anything. Like I sat in two hours of a class, or I sat three hours of a class, and I didn't see a difference that it made. We're not learning Spanish. We're not learning Persian. We're not learning any other language. Every other language you learn it so you can communicate in it. We're only learning this language so Allah can communicate with us. So everything that has to be said has already been said. As far as we're concerned. I'm less interested in saying something to you in Arabic. I'm more interested in Allah speaking to me directly. You understand? You know what that means? Every time we learn something a little bit in this class, a little bit more of the 114 surahs gets a little less locked away. One more layer, one thin layer gets removed, and another thin layer gets removed, and another thin layer gets removed. And there are more layers and more layers, and I've been trying to study Quran for what, 25, 23, 24 years now? I can tell you I'm still removing layers. It's, so it's not like when people come and say, if I do this program, will I understand the whole Quran? I'm like, <laughs> The whole Qur'an. One day when I can say I understand the whole Qur'an, I'll let you know. I don't understand the whole Qur'an. I'm trying. But you can... I mean, that's like saying, if you teach me swimming, will I cross the entire Atlantic Ocean? Will I experience every drop that exists in the Atlantic Ocean because I take this swimming class? What is wrong with you, bro? If we swim in the ocean our entire lives, will we touch all of its drops? No, an entire life of staying in the ocean, you can only come away with a few drops that touched you. And the rest of the drops remain untouched. Allah compares the Qur'an to oceans, multiple oceans. You, you, you understand how heavy that analogy is? You can dive as much as you want. The only parts you will experience are the parts that are touching you. And there's so much infinite wisdom that is beyond you. You have to humble yourself to it. The one who creates the skies and the earth. He keeps talking about how he created the skies and the earth. How much of the skies do we understand? In fact, even how much of the earth do we understand? How, how much of the bottom of the ocean do we understand? How much of the depths of the earth do we understand? Oh, just, if you just humble yourself to how much unknown is there, and the one who has all that infinite knowledge gave us a book to try and understand. Yes, we will understand it at some level, but are there other levels? Yeah, there will always be. There will always be. My favorite, one of the, my most beautiful experiences in life was meeting with Professor Abdul Halim from uh, Oxford University. The first time I met him, I meet him often, but uh, the first time I met him, I was at his apartment in London, and if you don't know, he's written one of the most remarkable translations of the Quran published by Oxford University Press. Um, and he sat there and, you know, we had some conversation and in the middle of his conversation he goes, I've been studying Quran for 55 years. I think I'm beginning to understand it. That's what he says to me. And I, was just, I just melted in my sofa. Like, oh, I just had nothing. He's one of the leading authorities on the study of the Quran in the world. It's like I'm beginning to understand it. 
And one of and he says to me, and you know what I'm beginning to understand? You understand nothing if you don't understand context. He says, you know, you understand nothing if you don't understand what? And he didn't mean by context history. He actually meant everything around context. History is one part of context. That's called historical context. There's also sociological context. There's also psychological context. There's also textual context. Where is this conversation happening? Why is it happening like this? What else is happening in the surah? The surah itself is a context, right? There are multiple layers of context. And the more you contextualize, the more its wisdom opens up to you. The more it dawns on you, subhanAllah. You know, nowadays, I'm not sharing much with you guys because I got to teach Arabic, but we're a little bit ahead, so I have two choices in front of me right now. Either I could give you relief for more pressure work tomorrow and teach you a little bit more because I think you're comfortable with attached pronouns now and you're comfortable with this. Or I'll share a little bit of Quran with you for now, for 10 minutes because I haven't done that with you for a while. Okay, so right now I'm in the middle of studying Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Okay, and Surah Al-Jumu'ah is a very short surah. And in fact, before I share something with you from Surah Al-Jumu'ah, I'm gonna, if you feel overwhelmed by what I'm about to share with you, that's okay. I'm not going to give you a review. I'm going to walk you through it. And you, because this is being recorded, you can watch this later on and build that connection yourselves. Um, if you look at Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Yusabbihu is a present tense, which begins with a ya, the he, right? Yusabbihu lillahi ma fil samawati wa ma fil ardi. And the ma is actually the doer of Yusabbihu. It's non flexible. Non flexible means ma could be rafa, ma could be nasab, and ma could be jar. In this case, it is rafa, making it the outside doer. So, whatever is in the skies and whatever is in the earth declares Allah's perfection. That's what yusabbihu lillahi ma fil samawati wa ma fil ardi means. This is something called kinaya. Kinaya means if I say to you, they got all the right answers, they, did the, they finished the test already. When I say they finished the test already, what am I actually trying to say to you? How come you didn't finish it? That's called kinaya. Kinaya means saying something without saying something. Saying something without saying something. If I say, for example, you know, Ali didn't come late. Ali Ahmed didn't come late today. Then I'm pointing at Zaid and saying, how come you came late today? But I didn't have to say... Zaid, how come you came late? I just pointed at one. Allah says in these surahs, whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth declares Allah to be perfect. And the dumb human being looks at this ayah and says, that's cool. They should keep doing that. What is Allah actually saying? How come you're not doing it? How come you're not doing it? One of the most amazing things about this this. this Declaration, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ is that it's in the present tense. And you know what the present tense means in Arabic? Present and... So it's doing it right now and it will keep doing it as if to say to the human being, listen, you are falling short right now, but that doesn't mean that the tasbih of Allah doesn't exist. It's going on. And you know what? You have very little time in this world and you're going to be gone. But you know what? The tasbih of Allah will keep on going after you're gone. You have a small window of opportunity, these few breaths that you have in this life, to become part of this tasbih, to become part of declaring God's perfection. And if you don't, well, the universe is already at work and it is not in need of you. There's much bigger than you that is already doing Allah's tasbih. This is Allah's way of also saying kinayatan, as way of kinaya, He doesn't need your prayer. He doesn't need your praise. A common atheistic argument is, why does God want me to praise Him so much? Allah's answer to that is, actually, much more than you is already doing tasbih of Allah. Your tasbih is not needed. You're not that important. You not doing tasbih doesn't change anything. Allahu ghaniyun Allah is free of need. It's a powerful statement to begin with. Then you will notice, in, this is a delicacy in the surahs. It says, ma fi samawati wa ma fi ardi Whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. If, you take, if I take this away,
يسبح لله ما في السماوات والأرض. You know what that means? Whatever is in the skies and the earth declares Allah's perfection. That's not what Allah said. He didn't say whatever is in the skies and the earth declares Allah's perfection. He said يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. وما في الأرض. Why the two ma's? Why the two? And there are other places in the Quran where there's not two ma's. It's just one. So if let's look at another another surah. Let me show you something. Look at this. Sabbaha past tense. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati. I'll show you something else. Uh, at the end of Surah Al-Hashr. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ والارض is, is ma once or twice once okay let me show you one more i can show you a few more let's see 64 yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa sometimes two ma sometimes one ma sometimes two ma sometimes one ma what's going on the two places where the ma isn't there the two places where what's not there? The second ma is not there. With tasbih. Are Surah Al-Hadid, Surah number 57, and the end of Surah Al-Hashr. The end of Surah Al-Hashr. That's the two times where only one ma is used. So the meaning becomes, whatever's in the skies and the earth declare God's perfection. Everywhere else, what do you find? Whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. Now, it sounds like they're almost saying the same thing, but there's something called itnab in Arabic, repeating something, when even without repeating it, the meaning would be complete. Okay? So if I say, I am the brother of, I am the brother of, or I'm the teacher of, and then I say, Ali Ahmed and Atiyah. I'm the teacher of Ali Ahmed and... Atiyah. But if I say, I'm the teacher of Ali Ahmed and the teacher of Atiyah. I said teacher twice. Did I have to? I didn't have to. But does it have a different effect? There seems to be an extra emphasis on the earth. Because if I say, and the teacher of Atiyah, who did I stress on? Her. That's what I, because it wasn't needed. So when you hear, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ There's an extra stress on the earth. You'll notice something in all the places in the Qur'an where the ma is twice. The very next context. Remember what Dr. Uh, Dr. Abdul Hakim, Professor Abdul Halim said? What's the Qur'an all about? You know what you're going to find? The next ayah is always about the people in this world. The next ayah is always something worldly. And somehow those, the tasbih needs to be done and it's not being done. Allah says, for example, in Surah Al-Taghabun, He says, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْنِ قَدِيرٌ Tasbih belongs to Allah. Or tasbih is done by Allah by whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. So st stress on the earth or no? Next ayah says, He created you among them are disbeliever and among them are believer. Some people aren't doing tasbih. And they think because they don't do tasbih, what doesn't exist in the world? The tasbih of Allah doesn't exist because they don't do tasbih. Allah says, no, even on the earth, whatever is there is doing tasbih. So before he even brings up their lack of tasbih, he says, by the way, you're not that important. Tasbih is still there, even on the earth. Don't just think, oh, God is in the skies. The, the kingdom of the heavens is good. The kingdom of earth is ours. No, no, it's not yours either. Even here, his tasbih is going on. He stresses it. 
But what about the places where the second ma is not there? I said two places the second the ma is not there. Do you remember what two places I said? Surah Al-Hadid and end of Al-Hashr. You'll notice in both of them, Allah is only talking about Allah. He's only talking about what? There's no focus on the people of the... It's just all about Allah. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورُ الله 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 there's no you're not even relevant in those contexts there's no special emphasis on what the ma is just a united kingdom of god that's it this is also about god What's this? That's hadith. What happens in, what's, what's at the end of Surah Al-Hashr? Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. What's that? Who's that about? Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. Who's that about? Huwa al-Rahman al-Rahim. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. Al-Malik, al-Quddus, al-Salam, al-Mu'min, al-Muhaymin, al-Aziz, al-Jabbar, al-Mutakabbir. Subhanallahi amma yushrikun. Huwa Allahu al-Khaliq, al-Bari, al-Musawwir, lahu al-Asma' al-Husna. Lahu ma fi al-Samawati wal-Ard. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi al-Samawati wal-Ard. Wa huwa al-Aziz al-Hakim. It's all about Allah. It's so beyond us. <laughs> What's even more interesting is the beginning of Surah Al-Hashr. This is the end of Surah Al-Hashr, right? Let me show you the beginning of Surah Al-Hashr. I'll show you the first two ayat. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati. At the beginning of Surah Al-Hashr, Tuma. Tuma. But what's the next ayah? He brought those who disbelieved from, from among the people of the book, from out of their homes. Ooh, back to the people of the earth. Focus on their rebellion, Allah. Down to a ma. Like down to where a ma is placed and where a ma is not placed is the precision of Allah's speech. Right? It's, it's, it's just baffling. It's just baffling. How Allah Azza wa Jal speaks. And I was, this is just one dimension of it. I'll mention one, one other quick dimension of it. Um, actually, I'll read this to you guys because I was discussing this with Dr. Saqib and it was so cool. I, I mentioned some of these things in my last khutbah, but it wasn't aired on, uh, online. It wasn't broadcast. But I want to share this with you guys. Let's see. I have too many friends. I need to have lesser friends. There he is. Okay. This is too much. Okay. Okay. Listen to this. The 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 rabbis. So Judaism is not one religion. It's it's there's lots of variety within Judaism, but one faction of the rabbis actually considered that anybody who stood under the mountain is cleansed, is pure. So the Israelites are pure and everybody other than them is impure. And they use the term goyim for them, which is un uneducated, unlettered, also impure. Okay? And the Quran uses the word ummiyin to describe the same concept, unlettered people. In fact, they even talked about their own people that don't have education in the Torah in the same terms. So even the Quran says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّون Even among the Israelites, there are أُمِّيُّون. So أُمِّيُّون in the Quran is not just a word for the uneducated among the Arabs, it's also the uneducated among the Jewish people. It's actually a, a, a term for, for all of them. But they had this concept that the ones that have the knowledge among them of the scripture, they are the ones that are pure. And everybody else is impure. Surah Al-Jumu'ah, actually, one of its goals is to respond to some of the beliefs in Judaism. Right? Those were the people of the Sabbath, if you remember. Right? They were the people of the Saturday. Allah made us the people of which day? Friday. Those were the people that were told, worship Allah all day. 
and don't do any business. Allah said to us specifically in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, after the prayer is done, leave and pursue Allah's favor. Like he's directly comparing what he gave to them with what he gave to us. And they, they tried to pursue rizq of Allah while Allah told them not to. Right? And there's a story about that in Surah Al-A'raf. And in Surah Al-Jumu'ah he says, وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Go pursue Allah's rizq. Go find Allah's favor. And then Allah says, even though I have made it so easy for you, I didn't ask you to give me all of Friday, I only asked you all of Saturday, I only give you, asked you for less than an hour on what? On fr- that's all I asked you for, just leave business for that hour. Then Allah says, and when these people see business and they see some entertainment, they leave you standing there. Meaning even when I reduce the time to just one hour, less than an hour, even now they get distra- distracted with rizq and with entertainment. Then he says, wallahu khayrul raziqeen. At the end, uh, what Allah has is better than entertainment and, with biz- and business and Allah is the best provider. What is Allah telling the Muslims? Allah is telling the Muslims, It's easy to criticize the Israelites. It's easy to criticize them. Oh, they violated the Sabbath. And then what is Allah saying? Look at you. And where did the surah begin? Everything in the skies and the earth. And everything in the earth does tasbih. And I'm asking you for a special tasbih on the day of Friday. On the day of Friday. And look at what you do. Look at what you're doing. You don't take Friday seriously. The, the, the way the arguments of the Qur'an just tie together. It's just 11 ayat. The surah is just 11 ayat. And such amazing things are happening in these 11 ayat. One after the other. Actually, we spent about three hours discussing donkeys the other day. For two days we've been discussing donkeys. Because the Qur'an gave the analogy of the donkey, right? So when it, my concept in tadabbur is whenever Allah talks about something, you really got to study it. So I've been watching how, do, how donkeys are loaded how they travel up the mountain, what different kinds of donkeys are there, how are donkeys used in the Bible, how are donkeys used across the Quran, what are the hadith related to, I just want, I want to know donkeys. I just want to know, why is this analogy being used? What's the significance of it? And this is, this is uh, Arabic, this study is your key to enter that world, the world of contemplation, the world of, the, the, the world of people that Generations before us were thinking about the Qur'an. You know how juicy it is? That just in it, within a year, I'm telling you, I'm going to give you guidelines on the 10th day. Within a year, if you guys follow the process, you can start getting a taste of what people from Andalusia and people from Sudan and people from India and people from Iraq and people from Syria, from people from Damascus, people from... You know, Makkah, people from Medina, from the last century, from two centuries ago, from three centuries ago, from five centuries ago, from ten centuries ago, from twelve centuries ago. All of them spent so many of their lives studying the Qur'an, studying the same ayah you're trying to study. And you can get a taste of their life's work. You get, this is what they thought about it. This is what they thought about it. You know what that does? It, it connects us to these souls that were all connected to the Qur'an, doesn't it? It, just, it binds us to those people. What an amazing thing that we get bound to those people. Sometimes I'm just, I have a thought. Sometimes I just have a thought about an ayah. I'm like, I wonder if anybody thought this. And I'm reading through different tafasir and I find like Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi in his commentary said almost exactly what I was thinking. And I'm like, ah, he beat me to it. But then it also feels like, wow, I just had a Razi thought. I just had a thought that was... And it's not, I don't have to be a researcher to do this. Sometimes there's a teenager who says, you know, I was thinking this about this ayah. What do you think? And I was like, I never thought about it this way. Let me do some reading. And then I'll find, young man, by the way, Imam Qurtubi, several centuries before you, had your thought. You just had a Qurtubi moment. You know, it's such an amazing thing that someone across an ocean, you know, in Cordoba, Spain, it's somebody who's like, centuries apart from you was thinking about the same thing and came to the same conclusion or had the same thought and documented it. It's it's a marvel. It's a marvel how Allah has brought people together through the Qur'an. And that's actually, I I know you guys have a thirst to try to understand the Qur'an and not be dependent on translation, but I want you to think bigger than that. You know the program's called Dream Big? Don't reduce Qur'an study to Arabic. Arabic is just step one. There are lots of steps that I want you to take, that I want you to just be a part of. Actually, 
I'm less interested in teaching Arabic. I am far more interested in teaching the Quran. And the only reason I teach Arabic is because I wanted people to study the Quran. So that's the only reason. I used to have a job teaching Arabic at a college in New York. Uh, Arabic 101, Arabic 102. I used to teach basic Arabic at the college. It was a cool job. And I used to ask students, why are you studying Arabic? What's your reason? Because you know the professors give you a survey, why are you taking this class? Somebody would say, oh, I have a Palestinian girlfriend, I want to impress her family. Somebody would say, I, I'd love to get a job with the Department of Homeland Security. Others would say, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get a job in the oil industry, I might be heading to the Gulf. And they have all these kinds of reasons, all kinds of reasons. And so the Muslims would say, of course, I want to understand Islam, I want to understand the Quran. But that would be like 1%, right? The thing is, um, I felt like I'm in the wrong job. I don't want to help you impress your girlfriend's family. I, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to help you uh, bleed the Muslim lands with more oil, for more oil with this uh, curriculum. I, wanted, I just want people to connect to Quran. And Arabic is just a means to that end, right? But to do that, you need to become two things. Two separate things, Arabic students and Quran students. You can't just be Arabic students because it will suck the soul out of you. Enough mudaf mudafile and you will become depressed on the inside. You will have no personality left. Your whole life will be light and no aliflam. Okay? <laughs> Everybody around you will feel jar because of you. <laughs> The fact that you're laughing at that lame joke means I have already started destroying your personalities. <laughs> Welcome to the cult. <laughs> but you know what? As you're studying Arabic, side by side, now you've got to have a plan to start studying what? The Quran. And I don't mean watch this YouTube video, then watch that YouTube video, and then watch this lecture and listen to that. That random stuff, you've been doing that your whole life. How much do you retain from that? You don't. You don't. You don't retain that way. I need, a, I need a, to give you a plan. Okay, here's how we're going to study Quran. Here's our one-year plan for Quran study. Here's our two-year plan. Here's our 10-year plan. Here's our 15-year plan. Quran is a lifelong journey. I told you it's an endless ocean, right? But you've got to have a plan on how you're going to navigate that ocean. That's really what I see here. When, when people make commitment to study Arabic with me, then I feel they've made a commitment to study Quran. Right? Not just, and Arabic is, the, the, the motivation to study Arabic will stay alive, not because you're studying more Arabic, because you're studying more Quran, and then you have unanswered questions that can only be answered when you get a little better with your Arabic. When you get a little bit better with your Arabic, you get more advanced questions. To answer those questions, you got to advance the Arabic again, and then more advanced, and then advanced Arabic, and you just keep climbing these two together. If you just do Arabic or just do Quran, there's always lack. You just end up lacking because you, you're studying Quran, but you don't really get depth. Or if you just study Arabic, you don't really feel nourished. You need to build both together. You know, I, I met, um, I'll share one more story with you. I won't give you more Arabic today. It's okay. I'll go easy on you. Uh, I met Professor uh, Mustansir Mir, who's a gem, by the way. That man's a gem. He's written a book called uh, Verbal Idioms of the Quran. Uh, you should look it up. Uh, it's a really great resource. It's, they stopped publishing it. It was published out of the University of Michigan um, in 19, the 1980s. He, he's from Pakistan. He uh, is, a, is a PhD in English literature, uh, mastered in, is, is an authority in Shakespearean English, uh, knows Persian, knows Arabic. Uh, he's a literary in all these languages. And he decided to come in the, in the 70s and, or 80s to the University of Michigan and do a PhD on idioms and expressions in the Quran, right? And he did it, and it's, 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 it's called Verbal Idioms of the Quran. It's a wonderful book, wonderful, wonderful book. I didn't know this existed, and I went to a Quran conference in 2003. This is how far back this goes, 2003, uh, in Las Vegas, I swear to God. It was a Quran conference in Las Vegas, but it was in Las Vegas, and he was speaking. He was just, you know, he's a nice uncle, giving a lecture, and he's like, I'm going to share with you 12 translations of this verse from different translators, and I'm going to show you how they are inadequate, 
how they don't meet the standard. And I'll, I, just, I had just started learning some Arabic. I knew some things. And I'm listening to him like, I know nothing. Like he just went through 12 different translations and ripped them apart. Published translations, right? And then he was having, in the lunch break, I kind of sat next to him. And I was like, because I had these Arabic questions in the Quran. Why is this bow over here? Why is this jar? Why is this this? Why is this that? So he was eating his food and I sat next to him and I was like, so can I ask you a question? And he, he didn't even look up. He's like, yes. And I was like, so in this ayah, there's a ba, but in other places there's a ala. Why is there a ba here? And he says, oh, that's because of, and he answers the question. Ten, he didn't even look up. He's like, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, oh, you just solved that problem. So I opened up another question. And he solved that problem. Then I gave him another question, and he got annoyed. And he goes, have you, do you have my book? And I was like, you have a book? <laughs> and he said, yes, it's called Verbal Idioms. I, you know, and I was like, okay, I have to look this up. So I can't find the book anywhere. So I called the University of Michigan. I was like, uh, the Middle Eastern Studies Department. Hey, you have a book called Verbal Idioms of the Quran. Hold on. And then, yeah, we have two copies left. I was like, I'll take both of them. I will have them both. So they ship it to me. Then I started talking about the book to my students. And the university started getting call after call after call. So they had to bring the book back into print so they could get copies of it. And then there's digital copies online or whatever. But it, it, it's such an incredible resource. Like, I think anybody who's working on translation of the Quran should have that book. They should have, among other books. I'll, I'll introduce you to these things. So as, we, as you study with me, I won't just introduce you to Arabic studies. I'll also introduce you to things that will help you in your Quran studies. Kind of, I want you to build your own Quran library too a little bit. Geek out a little bit, you know? And build that enthusiasm in the learning of the Quran. And you know, what kinds of things you can learn. The other really exciting thing, inshallah, if you progress enough with your Arabic, is I want you to be able to listen to Arabic medium material on the Quran. Uh, so the, the, the access you have right now is English lectures, or some of you speak two languages, so you have lectures from your local language, whether it's Urdu or Bangla or anything else, or Farsi, and you have English. But you're missing out on a whole world that exists in what medium? In Arabic. There's an entire world. And what, what the non-Arabs bring to the Quran is something the Arabs don't have. And what the Arabs bring to the Qur'an, the non-Arabs don't have. So we have, we, we, the non-Arabs have some intellectual contribution to the Qur'an that I do not find in the Arab world. What I, what I do find in the Arab world, I don't find in the non-Arab world. And right now, they are like this. And part of what I try to do in my lectures and my talks and things like that is I try to kind of take from whatever worlds I can find things. Like the Ma discussion is from the Arab world. That's Dr. Samir Rai's work. That's not, you don't typically find this kind of discussion in many of our English materials or tafsir, right? So that's the other thing I want you to be exposed to. How, how do we start making this stuff easy, inshallah? So I have big plans for all of you, but you guys have to, I'll, I'll give you a good old orientation, inshallah. There's only three things left to teach you for this course which we're going to do tomorrow. That's the plan for tomorrow. Can you believe it's already been eight days? Some people are like, yeah, it feels like 80 days. Okay, get over yourself. <laughs> okay? We just have three more things to learn. They're pretty easy lessons. They shouldn't take us long at all. Uh, and then the final day, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go over the exam with you. I'm going to try to go over both the exams with you. I might even try to record an entire answer key for the exam and send that to you guys ahead of time, just post it, so you can compare your answers. So when you come here, you come with your questions, why was this answer like this? Why was this answer like that? So we have a more productive session together. So I'll just send you the answer key ahead of time. I'll have my TAs make the answer key and put that out ahead of time so that everybody has the, so you can compare your answers. Because I really want you to grade yourself and identify where your mistakes are, okay? But then we'll have our final session after Maghrib, day after tomorrow. And what I'd like to do is let you know you can invite your family and friends to that last session. It's not going to be about just you. It's going to be about your future in Arabic studies, but also some things about the Quran that anybody can benefit from, inshallah. And I'll give you a map of how, what Arabic studies looks like, what, what lies ahead for you.
you know, what's the roadmap ahead, inshallah. So with that, I'll conclude for today. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.